Google and Apple control almost the entire mobile phone software industry today. Your current cell phone either runs on Google's Android operating system or Apple's iOS. 85.4% of mobile phones shipped in 2019 were running Google's Android, while the remaining 14.6% were running on Apple's iOS, giving Apple and Google complete monopoly of the smartphone software industry. With the current trade war between the US and China, the US decided to ban Huawei, citing national security and espionage as the reason for the ban. This simply meant Huawei could no longer have access to American technology and particularly Google services. And to be realistic, an Android phone without Google services is almost like a beautiful supercar that is well built externally but does not have an engine to run it. And recently, I tried to use one of Huawei's new phones that does not have Google mobile services. It felt so empty because I couldn't make use of my Gmail, Google Docs, YouTube, Google Drive, and everything Google. This has affected Huawei sales globally, but they are doing just fine in their home country, China, where Google services have previously been blocked by the Chinese government. But it seems Huawei had been prepared for this doomsday, as they unveiled their own mobile operating system known as Harmony OS just a few weeks after the ban. Initially, Harmony OS was supposed to be an option B in case the US government stopped Huawei from using Android. Finally, Huawei has announced that we might start seeing Harmony OS in Huawei phones from 2021. But there are some big questions that have not been answered yet, like Harmony OS versus Android. What are the differences? Which one is better or has the advantage? Can Harmony OS replace Android? What are the challenges Harmony OS will face in today's global market where Apple iOS and Android users reign supreme? As human beings, we get tired of things easily, and so we yearn for something new every now and then. Google knows that as time passes, Android will become old, which it is actually, and will not fulfill our requirements anymore. That's why they are developing a new operating system called Google Fuchsia as an Android replacement. Harmony OS is specifically targeting a direct competition with Google Fuchsia, not even Android. But in comparison with Android, the differences are enormous. Harmony OS is based on microkernels, which makes it light because these microkernels include a much smaller amount of code to run the operating system. Whereas Android is based on Linux, which requires a higher amount of code to run. Because Harmony OS is lightweight, it makes it suitable to run on almost every smart device from wristwatches, car stereo systems, TVs, smartphones, smart screens, and so on. Huawei says that Harmony OS will have improved cross-platform capabilities that developers will code once and it will work on every device. So if a developer wants to create an application for Harmony OS, they will just have to create one single application and that single application will run on every device that have Harmony OS installed, be it smart TV, mobile phones, car stereos, whereas on Android and iOS, the developer has to create a different version of the same application for every smart device. With Harmony OS, if you are video calling your mom on your smartphone and you want to have it on your smart TV which has Harmony OS installed, you can transfer it to your smart TV through NFC or Wi-Fi, which means it will follow you from room to room. That's why it's called Harmony. This is possible because Huawei developed new microkernels for the OS. All the tedious work will be handled by the OS itself. Huawei also claims that Harmony OS uses a better distributed data management and tax scheduling mechanism that is better than Android because Android has a lot of redundant code and also has a lot of fragmentation issues. They also say Harmony OS has no root access, unlike Android. For those of you Android fanboys out there, you completely understand the struggle. Rooting your Android phone can either make it better or get it completely screwed up. Back in the day, users could jailbreak their iPhones and modify the OS in a lot of different ways. But this caused a lot of security issues. As soon as Apple patched the jailbreaking issues, iOS became more secure than ever and is still one of the most secure mobile operating systems out there. But Android? Not so secure after all. While all of these Harmony OS offerings sound so good on paper, it's actually not as easy as they make it sound. Coming up with a new operating system is no child's play. Many have followed that road and failed with flying colors. The fact that Microsoft's Tizen, Amazon's Fire OS, Microsoft's Windows Phone, and Canonical's Ubuntu have all failed to make headway on handsets in the last decade should give you an idea of what might be awaiting Harmony OS ahead. 
Switching operating systems is much harder now than it was in the past. A mobile OS today generates and stores most of your personal online passwords, carries a virtual version of your credit card for easy spending, backs up all your videos and images to their respective cloud drives, and much more. Shifting all of that information across mobile operating systems has so far been a broken process. Even dedicated transfer apps by Apple and Samsung have failed to do this seamlessly for various strategic, security, and technical reasons. And this has actually birthed a new generation of users simply known as Apple or Android fanboys. Some arguing that iOS is better while others say Android is the best thing that ever happened to them. Whereas the two platforms are great platforms. But are we going to see how many OS fanboys any soon? I guess time will tell. Most consumers use their phones because of the apps on the phone, not because of the OS. They don't care what OS it is the apps are running on. App developers target operating system with large user bases since it means they will recoup their development costs much quicker. This was one of the biggest challenges with previous operating systems that failed. Developers either decided the extra work was not worth it or did not make it a priority meaning the apps typically lack the latest features available on Android and iOS. With over 2 million apps on Google's Play Store, it will require a lot of patience and deep pockets to convince app developers to port their apps from Android to Harmony OS and keep them updated. Even if all the right amount of money was used to lure developers into coding their apps to work on Harmony OS, it's still not a recipe for success. Let's take RIM for example, the company behind the now defunct BlackBerry phones. When RIM launched its BlackBerry 10 in 2013, it held a big event that brought 15,000 apps onto its platform in under two days. To make it easy on developers, it gave them a financial reward of $100 per app. But 15,000 apps is a drop in the ocean of the then 1 million Android apps and was simply not enough to bridge the gap to save RIM's struggling smartphone business. While Huawei claims similar ease of porting between Android and Harmony, it will take a mammoth effort to get thousands of developers across the board and then to stay there. The US trade ban wasn't just on Google alone to stop working with Huawei, but almost every major US company. And most apps rely on Google services or other US company services to function, meaning apps like Facebook, Amazon, Uber, eBay, PayPal, and others cannot be simply ported over to the new operating system without a special license. And getting that license might not be possible any soon, or these companies might just see that it's not worth the effort. These are apps that an average mobile phone user cannot do without today. Can you imagine yourself without Facebook, Instagram, Amazon shopping for a whole year? We can just keep mentioning these obstacles one by one. But one of the reasons why Huawei might succeed is because, unlike others that have tried and failed, Huawei already has an established Chinese market that it can be sure of at least 50% success rate. And they have a lot of backing of the Chinese government because Harmony OS succeeding is a crucial part of the Made in China 2025 master plan. Unconfirmed reports also have it that Chinese companies like Oppo, Vivo, OnePlus, Xiaomi are testing Harmony OS. They might also be future-proofing themselves should the US decide to put a ban on them too. If you've enjoyed this video, you can check out the other video here on the channel that says what happens if China wins the 5G battle and this other video here that says can America live without Chinese goods and products, alright? It has been Kingsley as always. I'll catch you again in the next one.